The following tutorial is brought to you by WholeLoops.com. It's production time. I'm Reed Stefan, Reels Puppet in the game. How to finish a hip hop beat. This video is going to be based off of a track I started a few posts ago where I created a hip hop beat from scratch sort of as a template and someone asked me to do a video finishing it. I figured why not? So what we're going to do is take this very basic beat starts like this. A hi-hat comes in. I kind of decided to start with the hook in my beat. So you got intro hook and then the verse comes in when the 808 comes in. And I'm just going to kind of go top to bottom. May as well just do this in chronological order since there's something I want to do to every channel in this that's going to help this feel more like a finished beat. Let's start out with our 808. We're looking at a whole loops Urban Beats 2 808. This one's number one. Now, this one's probably not going to be too audible in a cell phone speaker or a laptop speaker. And since most hip hop music is heard for the first time, probably on YouTube, on, on a cell phone, you really got to kind of cater your mix down for that because that first listen is really crucial. There's a really great distortion right here inside of Ableton's Simpler. That's a little bit loud now, but right off the bat, you can hear this coming, coming through a little bit more. We're going to filter out some of the highs too. Just so you can hear the difference. Go back. Let's also make this one voice. We're not going to want overlapping 808s. We don't need this to snap. The next thing we're going to do is here on the attack. But since we got a kick layered with an 808, we're not really going to need all this uh, first little pit. Maybe tighten the decay a little bit. So you feel that first punch a little bit more. Or maybe layer, or maybe elongate it. For that tail to hang around longer. And we can probably bump this up too. Having this clip right out of the sampler actually sounds not so bad. Now, the next thing we're going to want to do to the 808 is going to be here in the MIDI. And it's just a uh, four bar pattern that kind of loops around and around. And that's all we did in the first tutorial, because this was more about just getting your initial idea down. But let's make this a little bit less loopy feeling. Let's start out by making this maybe an eight beat pattern and uh, see what we can take out of it to help it bounce more between the kick and the 808 and not just feel like they're over each other. for sure this one can go. There we go. And then maybe put one more on here. Turn our loop, drag it out. Let's also chop this one for when our snare happens. So now let's make this a 16 bar loop and figure out yet one more thing we can do to it. Maybe here towards the end. We don't even need this one here. I like that. Probably won't need this one here either. Let's see if we can delete anything else. Let's try adding maybe a little uh, for the bounce, a little short one. 
Oops, too close. Even shorter. And maybe just to be fancy, this one's going to be a double 8082. separation a little separation always helps with the 808 midi just ever so slightly that little bit of silence is going to help all your compressors just kind of open back up so the next one can hit them again so let's take our midi make this a loop Duplicate it to this way, Command C and Command V it over here. And let's move down to our kick. So we kind of did some removal in the uh, bass MIDI. Let's do some removal in the kick MIDI now. Let's start out with this one. And this one too. Whoops. Kind of see it almost gets hotter as you delete stuff. But this is the way it goes. The first step is your adding and piling, and now this step is your removing. And uh, you can see how your taste really dictates what you remove. Uh, it's a very live experience. I'm doing this as I go. There's no way to just look at it and tell which ones need to be deleted. Let's, since there's an open hi-hat there, let's try this. We probably don't even need those. And look how much cleaning we just did. We just deleted almost half of these kicks, and it feels like it's the same beat still. Let me make the kick a little louder too. Now I'm also going to automate this transpose control under the sample so that on some of the kicks it's a little lower in pitch and some it's the main sample. Another super, super subtle trick that's gonna help your kicks come to life. I'm just gonna go and click in this automation. So on the downbeat, I want it to be at zero semitones and on the offbeat ones, I want it to be, uh, let's stretch this channel out so it's a little easier to see. I want it to be at just some lower number. So let's. Let's try like minus two is usually what sounds good. That way it's like a slightly different kick sample. On the... Even this second one we're gonna turn down. Anyone that doesn't land on the bar line and is one of these offbeat ones, trying to get turned down. This one too. I guess since I'm dealing with loops here, I really only got to go to here. And then I can copy my automation around. Oops. And uh, this little plus button is nothing new to Ableton 10, but man, is it useful. Boom. Then you hold Shift, another Command C. Boom. Our kicks just got a major upgrade. You can copy this new MIDI over here. Look at how many less kicks we have going. Do your reggaeton rhythms sound like they could use a little tan? Are your Latin beats lacking culture and organic flavor? Here at Whole Loops, we've got the product for you. Introducing Hot Tropics 2, the sample pack sequel jam-packed with all the seasonings and tropical heat needed for your next Spotify smash. Hot Tropics 2 is available now only at wholeloops.com. All right, so the next channel down is our snare, and we're just gonna grab this sample out of the finder again and make it its own thing so we can do a little bit more adjustments to it. And let's make our MIDI on the correct octave. So we're just gonna kind of remake this channel without using impulse. 
That way we can get back in and uh, do some more adjustments. Definitely want to use the sustain, shorten it. Definitely uh, don't need the filter or multiple voices on it. All right, so now that we've made this snare just ever so slightly snappier, let's just go in here to the MIDI again and see if there's anything that we can do to make it a little more uh, interesting. Let's try getting rid of these. Maybe that was all it needed, just deleting these. Let's combine these now, Command J, into a 16 bar loop and loop these out. And we're just gonna do something slightly different for the end. So it's not, again, just the literal eight bar loop problem. Let's see what we can do. I think that little pause might've been it. Our snares are sounding pretty good right now. Let's go down to our next instrument, hi-hats. Here it is, we're gonna do that same trick. Must have pulled a lot of samples from Urban Beats 2 this day. And drag this into a new sampler. And we can just pitch it down. I kinda like to pick a one that almost sounds like it's in key. None of them really do sound perfectly in key, but eventually like you find one that kind of feels really nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go into the MIDI once again and see what we can edit. I actually kind of want these to uh, be straight eighths, and eighths instead of uh, the on and off ones. I think it'll help it just be a little bit more predictable, especially because there's going to be a vocal over this part. You don't want to be too uh, choppy with your rhythm. I'm actually going to do something a little faster because the synth is slow, other pattern is slow, Eighth notes are feeling a little slow too, so let's find somewhere to maybe interject some sixteenth notes. Right on the two, maybe. Maybe on the uh, last one, like a fill. Hey, just that one in the center. This is a little treat for the listener. Almost like we threw it in a pause where there was nothing. That's the name of the game here. We're also going to add some uh, randomized panning to this. Leaves the center nice and open. This is really a feel thing. Sorry, I'm not saying too much. I'm just kind of deciding what sounds nice to me. And that's really what this step is about. Once we have our pattern here, we can copy it over these pieces now. And let's create a nice little accent hat too. Something like inhumanely fast to just happen in the background. I like this one. Let's try this one. I'm just going to put a single note where I'm envisioning the uh, accent going.
Perfect. So now we're going to take all these one spots where I just, oops, where I just dropped a single hat in. And we're going to turn this into something faster. Not really sure what. Might just do something kind of random ish and see what I like. It's usually what ends up happening. You can come up with some really awesome stuff by just completely disregarding the grid and just sliding things around. I don't even need this one. I think this might just be our loop right here. Command J. Oh, I don't even need this one now. Make our loop four instead of two. Let's do a little bendy on this too. Let's go the other way. Let's go from up. Ah. Gonna pitch in a little bit. You could put a uh, little pan automation on this so that every time we hear it happens in a different ear. How about that? Oops. And then just plus this guy, copy and paste that. You got our nice accent hat clip. Now that we have that, we can take our, uh, you can also cut some of the base out of these background hats too to help them feel nice and thin like the original ones. There, it's more like it. Now down here, we've got some open hi-hats. The only thing I don't like about these is they're a little bit harsh. I'm going to see if the soft. That helps a lot. Maybe we'll just soften the attack on both of these. And a little low cut action never hurt either. So you can see we're not really using any plugins to finish these. You don't need plugins to finish your beat. The plugins come after the vocal's been recorded. <clears throat> Don't ruin your dynamics and all that stuff at this point. Just leave it as dynamic and punchy as possible. Let the compression happen once the vocals are there. It'll help the dude mixing the beat and the acapella a whole lot. And if that dude is you, it'll help you a whole lot. <laughs> We may not even need this first one. Let's save it for when our hats come in. There we go. All right. We've made it down to our final channel. We're gonna do a little bit of audio slicing and whatnot to this, so I'm just gonna freeze and flatten it. Convert it to audio real quick and easy. Give it a little option drag down here. Now I can mute our original. find some spots where we can pitch down, spots we can reverse. We're just generally looking to go and chop and screw this thing up. Ooh, you know what? We're going to have to do this the other way. So let's chop this up into pieces. And we're going to 
caps lock are all these. Do some fancy backwards stuff. Got my caps lock on, R, R, R. Boom, 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 boom. Drag them all, boom. Maybe a little bit more. Let's hear that with the metronome. I kind of want it to sound like it stops and just gets spun back. Cool. Maybe a little pause right there. This is why I love doing stuff as audio and hip hop because you could just do these awesome effects that you can't really do in the uh, in the synth world. Boom! Chop it right there. So we've got our first switch up. Let's keep going and see where we can switch it up. I'm also going to warp this as uh, quarter notes, forwards only. You can, uh, unfortunately, you can't automate this control. This is the one control in Ableton that you can't automate that I freaking wish you could. But uh, you can make a short version of it. Let's try uh, going down an octave right here. Shift down. Actually kind of like having it switch and pitch when the hi-hat comes in. That lines up perfect. Start for pitch down one. Switch up right there. And then we'll go back to the high one. There we go. A little paste here. So you can see we're kind of just keeping it interesting. These subtle changes are making it feel like a beat and not a uh, hip hop template. And this is really what beat making is. Do our same switch up over here. Last thing I want to do is uh, something to kind of send this to the background, something real simple. It's going to make it a little bit more rhythmic. Actually, no, let's get fancy. Let's use the echo. And we're going to do uh, some knob automation on this. Ambient spaces. Sure. Let's do some long diffuse. Perfect. So the reason I pulled up a plugin here is because a delay plugin slash reverb plugin like this new Echo in Ableton 10 is really your panning knob for sending things forwards and backwards. And you want your synth to be in the back because there's going to be a vocal going the whole time and that's going to be forwards. And only one thing can really be forwards in each frequency range. Like in the low end, it's the 808. In the high end, it's the snares and the hats bouncing back and forth off each other. And in the center, it's going to be the vocal. So we're going to make this kind of take the back seat. So let's do some automation now. Definitely want it to be nice and dry during that backwards part and come in nice and lush again with the reverb here. And let's kind of see what happens. Maybe we'll automate the knob and see what we get by hand. 
Yeah, you know what? Let's turn this off. Let's just record ourselves playing the knob a little bit. We'll do it live. Cool. So we just did a little bit uh, special movement here. Let's keep going and see what we get. So let's hit R, grab the knob. Nice and dry when it switches up. I don't know, sometimes I go crazy and I just do the whole freaking thing. Make the whole thing special, why not? Maybe didn't like that spot. And the beauty of it is if you screw up, you just hit the letter R, <clears throat> jump back in on the knob. We can copy and paste this first half over our second half. Man, and switching this to mid side mode really helps all of this take place in the background too, rather than stereo. Last thing I wanna do is just add an overall special effect to something um, so I'm just going to try a recent favorite of mine. Halftime. Let's drop this on here and see what we can do to our synth. Maybe uh, start with the mix down and bring it in. Hey. 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 All right, well, this just got real hot in the last uh, in the last minute. Well, let's try a half. Let's see what this sounds like. Hey, 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 hey! Oh my goodness! Definitely try halftime. Whatever your sound is, just try halftime on that sound because there's a good chance you're gonna like it. Let's see what happens here. I'm about to just rock out on this. Let's hit the record button. Man, this is gonna be fun. R. Let's go. We're trying to really make it go somewhere, you know? why I'd like to just hit record and rock out. Maybe I want to come in a little quieter right there on it. Or Boom, just like punching in a vocal.
See how we're really bringing this sound to life? Let's do that after we come in so it doesn't come in dry. And that's how you make your hip hop beat go from being a loop to a poppin' beat that's actually going somewhere. And now this beat is ready to uh, bounce out and send off to a rapper. So I hope this helps you take some of your hip hop loops and turn them into finished beats because there's probably a reason why you liked it and you've been holding on to it for so long and maybe this will help you kind of solve that puzzle as to how you can use that one little idea and really stretch it out for two minutes because that's all you need in a hip hop beat is just two minutes maybe not even so thank you so much for watching if you'd like to check out the sounds that i used to make this video you can go to wholeloops.com and get all these drums from the Urban Beats 2 collection. I also just put out Hot Tropics 2, more Latin-leaning stuff, but still super useful for hip-hop. Thank you so much for sticking around. We almost got 100,000 subscribers, which is super exciting. The next video will definitely be something very, very special for you guys. But until then, I'll see you in the comments down below, and peace out.